Welcome back to our Azure VMware Solution Technical Overview Series. In this module, we're going to go through networking and connectivity for AVS. So the AVS private cloud comes pre-provisioned with NSXT by default, uh, and there's no requirement to have NSX deployed on-prem. Uh, the T0 gateway is deployed in active-active mode, and a T1 gateway is deployed in active standby mode. These gateways let you connect network segments, uh, logical virtual switches, and provide both east-west and north-south connectivity. After deploying AVS, you can configure the necessary NSXT objects from within the Azure portal. Uh, it presents a simplified view of NSXT operations that a VMware administrator might use daily and is targeted at users who are not familiar with NSXT Manager. Today, there are four components that can be configured from the portal. Uh, segments, you can create network segments that display in NSXT Manager and in vCenter. Uh, DHCP, you can create a DHCP server or DHCP relay uh, if you plan to use DHCP to provide addresses to workloads running in AVS. Uh, port mirroring, you can create port mirroring to help uh, troubleshoot network issues. And uh, DNS, you can create and manage DNS forwarders to send DNS requests to designated DNS servers for resolution. You will still have access to the NSXT Manager console, uh, where you can use advanced netting and other NSXT features such as configuring routing, firewalls, microsegmentation, and more. So looking inside the SDDC uh, to what AVS is running on, uh, the bare metal hosts used for AVS are different from the server fleet that hosts other Azure IaaS services. Uh, they are in a dedicated zone within the Microsoft Data Center. When an Azure VMware Solution private cloud is provisioned, uh, an express route connection is created between the dedicated Microsoft Enterprise Edge and the Azure Global Backbone. This allows the AVS environment to communicate with Azure public services and, if you so choose, the internet. Uh, an express route gateway can be configured in an existing customer VNet to allow private customer Azure resources to communicate with AVS resources. A common pattern is to create a VNet with a Jumpbox VM and an express route gateway connected to the AVS express route and use Azure Bastion to connect to the Jumpbox. Most enterprise customers will have an existing express route circuit between an on-prem data center and an Azure region. Uh, using express route global reach, the customer can peer that express route circuit with the private express route circuit supporting AVS to allow for connectivity between the on-prem resources, uh, connected VNets, and AVS. And we'll show a little bit of how that's put together. Again, most enterprise customers will have that existing express route circuit between on-prem and Azure. So when we deploy our AVS private cloud, it'll be connected to the uh, dedicated Microsoft Enterprise Edge. We can then connect that to an express route gateway in our existing Azure VNet to allow resources within that Azure VNet to communicate with AVS. At this point, customer network can communicate with the Azure VNet shown in the middle, and the Azure VNet shown in the middle can connect to AVS, but customer network cannot connect directly to AVS yet. Uh, for that, we need to configure Express Route Global Reach to peer the Express Route circuit uh, supporting the customer connection to the Express Route circuit supporting AVS. Now, if you don't have Express Route in place, uh, customers can leverage connectivity from on-prem via site-to-site -site VPN. And here you can see that traffic flows through a VPN tunnel over the internet uh, to an Express Route gateway and then to the dedicated Microsoft Edge for AVS. Used to be that this, we only recommended this for Nod Prod or, or POC type deployments because HCX was not supported over VPN. However, that changed in early October. Uh, with HCX 4.2, we now support um, HCX and network extension migration over site-to-site -site VPN, provided you meet certain minimum requirements for that network underlay. So to recap, we talked a little bit about the NSXT configuration, networking inside AVS, and connectivity to on-prem. In the next video, we'll talk about AVS workload and application mobility with HCX. Thank you.